there's nothing quite like the peace and tranquility of the big smoke to make a man think that, gee, there's just got to be something better. Sometimes you need to escape the rat race and head for the bush. So why don't you join me and some of my mates as we hook up the camper trailers and put in a long weekend of adventuring just three hours from the big smoke. Our trip over the next few days takes us just south of Sydney to the southern highlands of New South Wales, which has some of the best four-wheel driving you can find outside a capital city. A cracker of a trip lined up for us that kicks off from the majestic Wombi and Caves region and then takes us down to the undulating tracks of the Brindabella Ranges National Park. From there, we're going to head back up north to Yalwell to take on the infamous Monkey Gum Fire Trail. Great scenery. Great driving, and with the camper trailers in tow, a real challenge. After raining for the last couple of days, the heavens finally cleared up, which made for some great touring, and cut down the dust on the road too. Now you can take the Wombi and Caves Road all the way through, but good old Colin thought that that was a bit boring, so he decided to take us on one of his secret shortcuts. Those rocks look interesting. Oh boy, Red could have trouble here, let alone the camper trailer. Oh well, that's what 360 horsepower's for. Let's see if we can jump across this lot. How's that, John? Couple of big rocks in there, mate, by the look of it. Yeah, nothing's too hard. Um, yeah. The secret to this one will be when you're going through, keep your speed down. You might have to drive wide to get your camper to come around some of the obstacles. Yeah. Um, and try and get a wheel placement because what that will do then is lift your axles up lift on your trailer. Up, yeah. And with these nice big rocks, you won't do any damage to your uh, your axle or any of the suspension. But apart uh, from that, that's a maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a go. Yep. Good stuff. All right, mate. All right we'll see Excellent. you on the other side. No worries. Time to customise the camper trailer. Well, there's nothing quite like a whole bunch of rocks any time when you're four-wheel driving, but when you chuck in a trailer, it adds a whole new perspective. Colin's got independent suspension on this trailer, and so that adds a whole lot of support, really, in a case like this, because he doesn't have to worry too much about the rocks in the middle of the axle. Me? Well, hey, I've got a beam axle. It's a different deal. But we'll get there. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on, Colin. Yep, there's Richard piling a few rocks. Once Richard and the family saw what Colin had in store, they very wisely decided to take All the right. long route around. Easy side or the hard side? I think we'll go the hard side. If I'd have had half a grain of sense, I would have taken it too. But hey, if Brody can do it, so can I. Move over, mate. Left! You're right on the front. Colin does nearly all his outback touring with a camper trailer, so he's really switched on at this sort of stuff. But then you'd expect that from the editor of a magazine called Camper Trailer Touring, wouldn't you? You're right. That's good. Straighten her up, Cole. The whole trick to negotiating a country like this, with a camper trailer especially, is to take it nice and slow. Colin's lucky. His GU Patrol is an automatic. It's a diesel. He can slog away in low range and do exactly that. It takes quite a bit of skill. Red, on the other hand, 360 horsepower. You know how hard it is not just to stomp it and see how high it'll fly? But thanks to the low-range gears, I'm going to take this so easy it's not funny. I'm going to try to anyway. Whoops. wonder how far we can go like this. That's what I like about New South Wales. All that convict blood hanging out to play with some rocks. Good on you guys. You like playing with rocks, don't you? Make it a highway for you. Make it a highway. I got the easy bit. They got about eight tons of big rock back there. Yeah, but look at them go. The whole trick when you're rolling rocks is to make sure your feet aren't underneath them. There you go. Couldn't have done it without me, could you guys? Taking the truck.
It's always good. Doesn't matter how many times you do it, it's always good. With Colin and Richard keeping an eye open, I've got every chance of clearing this in big red. Pretty easy to see what's going to crash on that camper trailer, isn't it? It's those rear supports, and guess what? By the end of this trip, both of them were bent. You get that. I think it was pretty clever of Richard and his family to avoid this rocky section and take the longer way up the road. It was quicker anyway. Set in the Blue Mountains National Park, the Wombian Caves are an extensive series of limestone caves on a 417 hectare reserve. They're a very popular tourist attraction and a great place to take a holiday oh, too. No, it's really nice it. staying around here. Great campsites, yeah. self-contained cottages if you want that extra bit of luxury I guess. And best of all, hot showers. That's what you need in New South Wales. Oh wow. Look at that big hole in the earth. There's heaps of guided tours all through this region. You can spend the whole weekend just going in and out of caves. But there's one self-guided tour at the fig tree here that's supposed to be the best caving experience in New South Wales. Come on, we'll check it out. Come on, you guys, you ready? Yep. Let's go, this will be good. Come on in. The limestone caves at Wombie were discovered in 1828 by John Oxley and John MacArthur while they were out searching for a bit more grazing land. I'll tell you what, it would have been rough going back in those days. Today, the Fig Tree Cave is a hands-free experience with an audio and lighting tour that's electronically controlled to guide you through the cave and explain what's going on along the way. At the far end of the chamber is the Opera House stage. Nearly as fancy as my pergola back home. There's no time limit, so you can take as long as you want. I'll tell you what, these vast caves and the limestone formations that have formed over millions of years are really something else. It's insane. Yep, I reckon we got something like that hanging off the roof of the Mud Flats Hotel. Oh, look at this. It's almost a religious experience checking out the stalactites and the stalagmites. What an awesome place. This is Mother Nature in a grandest, I reckon. Underground, beautiful, cool, and just magnificent. We would have loved to stay and explore a few more of the attractions here, but we've got a date in the Brindabella Ranges, so it was time to hit the road and head south. The hills of the Southern Highlands, wow, they're just some of the most beautiful country on earth, they really are. And it just goes to show, you don't need to travel all the way out to the Never Never to get in some spectacular touring. Look at this country. It's wild, it's wonderful, it's loaded with our convict past. I love it. You know, you Sydney guys are really lucky. This is right next door, right in your backyard. What a magnificent place to spend a weekend. We're all on the radio here too, just in case. The roads are tight, plenty of corners. You want to know who's coming around the next one, don't you? We decided to take the Hume Highway through Goulburn and then head south to Wee Jasper, the gateway to the Brindabellas. It's said that Banjo Patterson once lived around here and a number of his works were inspired by the incredible landscape of the area. I wonder if he had to put up with a great big sheep out the front of the garage too. Not long ago they moved the big merino. Gee, that would have been a job. wonder if they did it on the back of a camper trailer, Col. I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's just a beautiful day to be out touring. 
there, there is, you couldn't ask for better. Yeah. You can see that on a good day like this, you can see the Murrumbidgee River down there. Look at the um, river girls. Look how big it is. Oh, that's just so picturesque, the old bridge. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's called the Tamus Bridge. I think it was made somewhere in the 30s. Still in good condition for its age. Before long we got to the Stables Tavern, a really popular destination for families, social group and four wheel drive clubs visiting the area. The Tavern used to be the original stables for the New South Wales Mounted Police. They used to have to hang out here because gold was discovered in Coyandra in the Snowy Mountains. And guess what? Crooks used to try and borrow it on its way to town. This is Janet, she's the owner of the stables and what a fantastic place it is. There's everything here, it's just beautiful. Tell me a bit about the history of the stables. Well, um, it was purchased in the late 1980s by one of the local ladies. She bought three buildings actually. Gee, they looked a... after them, didn't they? I mean, they're fantastic yeah, buildings. Yeah, and they're here. sturdy, yeah. They really are, for their they? Age. Yeah. yeah, pretty impressive, isn't it? They put a lot of effort into housing the police, didn't yeah. they? <laughs> yeah. yeah, keeping the baddies out, maybe. Too. <laughs> you don't do that now, though. You let us in. So, <laughs> no. what, what's the? Uh, what else do you offer here? I mean, obviously, it's a great bar. What else Thank is on you. offer? Um, we do a local rainbow trout um, yeah. from Tumut. We do an Angus Scotch fillet. We do a, quite a good menu that will satisfy all tastes. We've got accommodation, we've got three cabins. Um, and if you overstay um, your drinking level, you can just plump yourselves on the grass outside. Oh, I hear that. Plenty of room swag. to pitch a tent or a swag or a camper trailer out the back. Not that I've ever done that myself, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not long after leaving Wee Jasper, we hit the Brindabella National Park. This is the most northerly park along the Australian Alps, sitting northwest of the New South Wales ACT border. Good to be back on the dirt, Cole. Mate, with the amount of dust this car and camper's throwing up, uh, you should be changing that to back in the dirt. Yeah, I am in the middle of your dirt at the moment. <laughs> and uh, it shouldn't be that way, mate. I don't have fair air conditioning. <laughs> You do, you have those little kick panels at the side, just let one in, trust me. Yeah, but your thing's got the aerodynamics of a brick. I'm just filling up with dirt. <laughs> Driving on these tracks can be fairly hard going, especially when it's raining. So you need to take a few precautions and check the weather conditions. If you don't do that, you'll find the track can get very slippery very quickly. With that in mind, it's time to let down some tyre pressures. Camper trailers, well for me, I'm talking about 18 PSI on the truck and 14 PSI on the camper. Other people will have their preference, but of course the important thing is to make sure that the camper trailer tyres are bagging out roughly the same as the trucks. But even with the right pressures, Colin found a particularly soft sandbank and managed to bog his vehicle. Colin's been travelling this region a lot and he's never had any problems on the sand before but with all the recent rains the riverbank is less stable and it's taken him by surprise. What we're going to have to do is strap, 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 okay? Yep. We'll get about as many straps as we can, yep. the same length of. Let's try that. Brody spent 22 years in the Navy in submarines. I reckon he'd feel right at home with that Nissan under the water. <laughs> Good old Captain Cole. He made this a fun trip for me. Okay, Ruthie, you're ready there? Yes, mate. All right, the slack's been taken up now. Okay, see how you go there, Ruthie. Oh, 
Geordie's well and truly stuck. That winch is doing its job, but it's me getting pulled in instead of Colin getting pulled out. And the more Colin tries to drive out, the more he's digging himself in. Too much revs, Col. Slow down. Yep, that truck is going nowhere. Stop, Col. I'll just um, get his shovel off the roof rack there. Great work, isn't he? Looks like the only way out is to dig because this yep. truck is going nowhere. Car on there yet, mate. Meanwhile, back at the trucks, the girls are doing their own recovery. <laughs> Big tin can under the water. Captain Cole goes sailing again. <laughs> Tell me to stop smiling, will you? <laughs> I haven't had so much fun on a camper trailer trip ever. <laughs> Drive! That's working good there, Ruth. You're not moving at all now. We'll keep going on this. Good thing Richard is on hand to help out. Bit of that high country experience helps no end here, doesn't it, mate? Perfect, Ruth, there, Cole. Perfect. After a long struggle, we finally get the patrol to start moving. The TJM 12 ton winch is certainly working overtime. I'll tell you what, though, it's holding up really well. Come on, mate. More mumbo. And that's it, yes! After that diversion, we're back on the track and climbing. Gee, it's good to be back on some hard ground, eh, Cole? Here we are. We're trying to get through to McIntyre's hut tonight. Um, but before we can, we've got to go up and down a couple of pretty considerable hills. Like this one here. This one's a doozy. Wow. Just out of interest, we've climbed 700 metres since we left Lee Jasper. And when we head down towards McIntyre's, we'll drop uh, about 500 metres and a couple of kilometres. The biggest trick to remember when you're making a big descent with a camper trailer on the back is that the vehicle and trailer's probably going to clock in at around the four tonnes. Now, that means using the lowest gear you can. In my case, I'm in the gear masters and in the low range and right down in first, and letting the engine haul you up all the way down. Secrets driving this terrain is be aware of your speed and be aware of the capability of your car or your camper. If your draw bar is too low, you don't have enough ground clearance on these ramp overs, you're going to catch a draw bar. That potentially can lift up your rear wheels, which means you're going to drag it over the mound, and you have the chance then of uh, bending your draw bar. Take a look at these drop-offs either side as you come down this ridge line. They'd have to be dropping about 400 metres down, I reckon. Yeah, these are nice thought. I hope I don't get a real close look. McIntyre's hut. It was built by Les McIntyre in, uh, in the 1960s as a fishing hut for his family. And not long after that, it saved a bunch of bushwalkers in midwinter when they got stuck here and this, this was their refuge, you know, it kept them alive. The Department of Interior recognised that, so they kept the hut. But then in 1999, some vandals burnt it down. Now, fortunately, the local four-wheel drive clubs came along, got together, and rebuilt the hut. But you know what? At the end of the day, this is just a magic place to stay. It really is. I know why old Les built his hut here. Green flats all over the place. Wonderful four-wheel driving to get in and out. It's just such a nice place.
doesn't get much more Australian than McIntyre's Hut. This is just one beautiful little corner of the country. And so to celebrate that, we're going to do a typically Aussie meal. Let me show you how it's done. Now it starts out with two different types of uh, mince. We've got some beef mince here, good old beef mince, and we've got some pork mince. Pork mince isn't always bacon chopped up. No, it should be. It isn't always. So um, try it once again to get the best stuff you can. The leaner the better. And when it comes to pork mince, forget it. It's just going to be loaded with fat and flavour right from the start, which is why we're using it. OK, so we've got two different types of mince in there. And I've got Colin to knock up some breadcrumbs, because you've got to have breadcrumbs for this recipe. Good on you, mate. In they go. With the breadcrumbs in there, we'll add a few more things. This, of course, is curry powder. I'm going to add about that much. How much is that? Ooh, less than a whole tablespoon, which is quite a lot when it comes to curry powder. Then we're going to add some pepper. There we go. A fair bit of pepper. Oh, I know the salt did. Well, look at that. That's all right. Salt's bad for you anyway. We'll forget about that. We'll compensate by adding more Worcestershire sauce than normal. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Any sauce is going to be loaded with salt. That's what it's all about getting the salt balance right. And then we'll add a couple of eggs. Bingo. And his little sister, Dingo. There we go. One more little ingredient here, and that's some onion. I grated up three onions here, but don't use it all, because we need some for later to make the gravy. Probably use about two thirds of it in our rissoles. Here comes the fun part. And just for the sake of the camera crew who've got to eat this later on, I did wash my hands. It was about a week ago, but that's all right, isn't it, guys? Okay, here we go. Now, you can see that that's turning into one great big sticky lump. And if we were, you know, in a real hurry, we'd just slap on one big rissole and call it lunch, wouldn't we? But we're not going to do that. We're going to make little rissoles. Now, you know the joke about the one-armed shearers cook, don't you? You know, how he made really good rissoles? dum dum -fa. We won't do that. Okay, there we go. Each rissole can be as big as you want. We're going to make these fairly big. Except for that one. Can be yours, Anthony. It's only little. And one last one for luck. And there we have it. Now, there's a couple of other things we need for this meal. One is some mashed potatoes and the other's peas. And that's being handled over at the other camper trailers. That's the beautiful thing about going camping with a bunch of camper trailers, you know. When you all sit down to have a meal, everyone can cook one little part of it or something. So all I've got to do now is knock up these rissoles in the barbie, and while that's happening, I'll make some onion gravy. But uh, meanwhile, let's go and see how the spuds are getting along. Frozen, I think. A few more minutes. Oh, nice. Everyone's going to love these. Brought a special mash. Well, it looks like it won't be too long before the spuds and the peas are ready. So uh, I've heated up the Weber. It's been running for four or five minutes. You need to get these lidded barbecues hot before you do anything with them. Time to bung on the rissoles. Anthony's going to time this for five minutes. That's the cute thing about this. Let's give him a time. We'll come back in five minutes to switch them over. And by that stage, it'll be time to make some onion gravy. How long's five minutes? Well, if you haven't got someone timing it, it's about two beers. Cheers.
precisely two beers later. Thanks, Anthony. Um, we'll just spin these over. Look at that. Because they're rissoles. Give them a little tamp down. Shut the lid. How's our spuds and our peas doing? Peas are great. Peas are great? Yep. Spuds are good. Melinda, I think you get to eat first. Stick a few on there or do you want a spoon or something no, to do it? I'm sure I can do it like you this. can do it. You're a mum. You're used oh, to this look stuff. At look at that. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah, there we go. These are great pots. All right, cool. Now that's uh, campfire mashed potato, which means it's been done with the skins on, so it's really healthy. Good stuff. Tomato, Tomato sauce, sauce for you. Thank now, you. Melinda, you get to. Oh, gravy. I forgot the gravy. I don't, do I need tomato sauce? No, no you probably don't not need with the it. Gravy. Not with the gravy. The sauce was actually an alternative for those people who don't like the gravy. Now we need a taste test. All with me. Yeah, with you. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Are they good rissoles? Good rissoles. You're honest Fantastic too. Rissoles. She's really honest, this lady. So. The peas are better though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go, dead easy. Can't get much more Aussie than that with a bit of German flavour thrown in. Good stuff, eh? Hey guys, what are we going to call these again? Um, Ruth Hole. Ruth Hole? Oh no, we can't call it Ruth Hole. <laughs> we could, but we won't. Um, McIntyre. Next morning, the girls are up and raring to go, and we're all ready for a great day's driving. But before we hit the track, I have to find out how Colin was able to handle the previous day's hill descents with such ease. Not to take anything away from his driving skill, mind. What you doing, Colin? I'm just comparing my old brake controller to my new brake controller. Oh, OK. Yeah, this is the old one I just took out. You know, this one has basic controls, you know, how, how much yep. power it gets, the delay, and it's got a manual slide. Yep. And um, you can adjust how much you've got pressure on your brakes. The new one I've got, it's the Heyman Reese IQ2, it's got an automatic control in it, so it's got a little inertia sensor, so the harder you brake, the more power it gives on. Oh, that's your advantage back there, eh? Oh, definitely. Wow. But it still has the manual slider, so I don't have to touch the car brakes. I can actually use the manual slide, and it will actually brake the trailer. Righto. Even works in reverse. That's great, mate. It works in reverse, too. Yeah, no, I wasn't reversing up those hills, though. No, no. <laughs> no way. I'll tell you what, we've got a few more to do, too, by the look of it. Yeah, we certainly have. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let's no. get into it. No worries. Good on you, mate. The plan for the day was to work our way out of the Brindabella Ranges to Yalwell to tackle that monkey gum fire trail. But there's still plenty of driving to go in the Brindabellas themselves, and the tracks around Mount Koori, which dominate the region, are steep and very slippery. Look at the mountain girls over there with all the rocks on the top. That was Mount Koori. It's always a funny feeling going over the mountains with a camper trailer. I've got to admit to liking it, you know. You head up the thing, you can feel it drag back on the truck, and then just as the truck's getting over, you get that big shove up the bum and push forward again. It's a little bit like surfing, but with six wheels on a dirt track. Probably nothing like surfing at all, really, is it? There's lots of ruts around here, and you only have to imagine what it's like in the wet. This could turn into an absolute gutter, this place. It really could. Now, that'd be a whole lot of fun if you weren't in here trying to get out in a big hurry, that's for sure. On the way down through this descent, we kept using the trailer brakes to pull the whole rig straight and to give the brakes on the vehicle a little bit of a rest, too. My big tip here for people with petrol engines, any engine for that matter, is to go get yourself some Marks adapters, low range gears, because that's the only thing that's saving my brakes on this hill with this camper trailer behind, I tell you. Look at this steep track oh, down here, Chloe. Look at this girls. The automatic and the V8, I've got it locked in first low, and I've got a little bit of engine braking. But I bet you, in fact, I can feel it, I bet you that the trailer brakes are skidding. How are your trailer brakes going there, John? 
Yeah, mate, I'm using them an awful lot, actually. Need them to uh, pull it straight on some of these bumps. I'm relying on Richard in the truck behind to tell me whether my wheels are locking up or not, and I'm adjusting the uh, controller accordingly, but I've only got a, a fairly cheap unit in this truck. If the car gets a bit out of shape coming down a hill, you can use the manual slider and straighten her up again. And uh, you can use it just to lock the trailer up if you need to. I won't tell him I've been doing that. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I'm pretty impressed, actually. You know, look, it, it stays pretty straight. It's not bad. This brake controller costs more than the whole truck. Yeah. It's fairly easy to lock up electric trailer brakes, and it's amazing how often you wind up riding that controller on a steep downhill descent. But if you look at the way Collins handles it, it's a whole different ball game. He's got the progressive braking thing happening there, and you don't see anywhere near as much tyre skidding. I like the view up there. You've got a nice drop off on the side there. Yeah, there's a couple of big, uh, the big steep drop offs on each side actually. Now you haven't got a spare hang glider in the back of the trailer, have you? No, but I can tie a couple of handkerchiefs together. That'll help you. Mate, you must have a damn big nose if you think your hanky's going to stop me. I'm all for experimentation. <laughs> Driving on these tracks can be pretty hard going, especially when it's been raining. With the weather closing in, we've got to get off this track and get onto the highway as quick as we can. And that means heading towards Braidwood. Braidwood is three and a half hours south of Sydney and it's the first entire town to be listed on the New South Wales State Heritage Register. It's a great hub to experience an absolute smorgasbord of great four-wheel driving just south of Sydney. With historic churches, pubs, galleries and antique shops, there's plenty to see and do. But I'll tell you what, for me, it's the local bakery that's the biggest draw. With a selection of cakes, pies and delicacies of all kind, it's kind of hard to know where to begin. Or for that matter, where to stop. I'll have six of the little boy gingerbread men, please. They've got to be bigger than the girls, haven't they? Cole loves those meat pies, especially with a bit of sauce on top. Must be an old Navy thing, mate. If the handbrake asks, just a small wholemeal roll, no butter. Yeah, right, Ruthie. Looks like you've been on small wholemeal rolls for a while, doesn't it? Well, the weather looks a bit more promising, so we decide to head a couple of hours north to Morton National Park. But wouldn't you know it, the heavens opened up again and the track into monkey gum turned into a sloppy, yicky, yucky mess as quick as that. It's funny, this kind of a track. You can see what you're doing in the dry and it's not that hard to negotiate at all. But with a camper trailer on the back pulling you all over the place and a slippery clay surface and all these big ditches where you just can't see what's going on, there's a fair bit of luck involved in plunging further forward all the time. I mean, look at this. There I am, pegging out the side of the hole looking for a better track, and I'm just about getting water through the doors. In these kind of conditions, you really do have to watch out for deep wheel ruts hidden by the water, causing your beam axle to ride up over the hump in the middle. At least most of the time, all it's doing is a bit of ploughing. Wow, this is horrible, isn't it? Someone's packed this recently. Yeah, it's firm underfoot. <laughs> Unless you got... Unless you got thongs on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Hey, Richard, you might want to come and have a look at this, mate. I don't know if it's um, the place to take the family camper, to be honest. She's a bit of a destruction test. Look at that. Look at the scars on it. Mate, you might not want to do this. This is Monkey Gum Fire Trail in Yalwell. Uh, it's raining. It's um, pretty much straight downhill. There's a lot of big rocks. Now, it's a hard job in a four-wheel drive on a good day. Uh, with the camper trailers, it's a, another thing again, isn't it? My approach with the beam axles is going to be to try and get at least one wheel up on the rocks at all times. I reckon it's going to cost me a mudguard, the back of a mudguard, but... Um, I'd rather that than bend an axle. It's getting dark, it's wet, it's going to be slippery, and as I'm breathing, it's a bit steep as well. I 
I'm going to give this a crack first, and as far as I'm concerned, it's all about watching where I'm going. I'm in low range, I've got the gear masters, so that means really low range first gear in the automatic, and I'm letting the motor drag the whole package back. Even so, it's so slippery, really, it's not a place where you can use brakes. Why does this always happen to me? I start out nervous, you know? As soon as I'm into it, it's just fun. What? Holy dooly, gee, this is slippery. I'm actually sliding here. Full on sliding. Beauty, at least there's plenty of rocks to hit. Richard stuck around for the first few hundred yards, but he'd already turned his trailer around. The family needed to get out of here. This wasn't the place to get stuck at night with a couple of kids in the rain somewhere up a rotten track. Me and Brody, ha, huh? well, we're just idiots, aren't we? Come on, Cole, let's go, mate. Let's give this a shake. Thing about Cole is he enjoys his adventures as much as me. on now because um, pretty soon I could just be using the rear locker here to point straight. I can't do that here because I've got to steer through the thing. piece of timber down next to this rock on the left, it'll just kick the wheels off. Yeah, a little bit further. Come on. What are you girls? <laughs> that's as far, that's all right, that'll do me. It's all right, thank you. Thanks girls. <laughs> right on, coming. This is one of the simplest tricks in four-wheel driving. You lay a log down next to something nice and high, something that'll take the sill out of your truck, and let the wheels slide alongside it. That's fine, mate. The trailer's actually being held there by the log. That's the glue. Beautiful. Good job, Unfortunately, the log I chose weighed about three tonnes. Good on you, guys. Look at that. Save some damage on the family camper trailer. Oh yes, I'm sure the handbrake will be really pleased to do that. I haven't told her she's got to clean it yet. Whoa, boy am I in trouble. Whew. Well, if that's the worst of it, that's not too bad. We did it, we come through unscathed. Well, I did anyway, time to go and see what happens to Cole now. I reckon I'll just pop my parasol and head on up. Watch out Mary Poppins, here I come. Well, with dark right on us, Richard and the family have left. Good on you guys, we've had a terrific time, but really, with the rain and everything else, time to go home. That's I it. couldn't agree oh, more. Beautiful. Yep, wheels are right. You won't be able to do much else anyway, so just take it real slow. It's got slippery. Oh, it's amazing how slippery it is. It's fairly amazing climbing this track in the dry. I've done that, and that was without a camper trailer. Coming down in the wet with three and a half to four tonnes worth of rig on a slippery track in the rain at night. Hey, good thing we love an adventure around here, I can tell you. Come on, you need that trailer wheel to get on that rock without tipping your rig. Keep going straight, keep going straight. Boy, that was slippery. No worries, that's all good. Oh, you got the sidebars anyway, that should kick it off. Keep it going straight, keep your wheels straight. Watch that big rock on the left. No damage. Beautiful. Good thing I do strong mods. My high lift jack just clipped a uh, hanging on the back. Just clipped the rock. Right, that was too easy, Cole. We've only got another eight k's of this crap. 
And we should pull in the pub. Bloody hell. And you know what? For the rest of that night, we battled that track. There were bog holes and bigger bog holes, and then there were some really big bog holes. We've still got quite a way to go, too. Just backing up, Cole. Again, tell me what I'm going to hit you. Oh, boy. Look at that water hole. That one's got one big lip on it. Well, I've got a tactic here. It's called 360 horsepower, flat to the floor, see what happens. No, it's not that I'm over it, it's just that I want to get the truck over it. Oops, that didn't work. Might have another go. Probably just about destroyed the camper. Someone else tell the handbrake, eh? Cole's coming behind, which is the tougher position to be in on a night like this. But of course, he's got the independent axle, so he's got one less thing to worry about over these big rocks. Looks like Colin's going to follow me straight through with the old hit the pedal hard thing. But no, with the independent suspension on his trailer, he's got a whole new idea on how to approach this. Oh, look at that. He just about walks over the thing. He's meandering up the side there beautifully. Yep, makes me think I should have tried that. <laughs> Never mind. I think I might have bent the beam axle on that one. That's my defence anyway. And I guess I kind of enjoyed hammering it. Good if on you, Cole. If my trailer had gone through on that angle, it would have snagged that rock and we'd be looking at a bent axle and wheels pointed in like that at the moment. Plus you got, what, four inches under the truck? Yeah, four inches and 33s. Four inches and 33s. Yeah, tyres. Versus and... two inches and 31s. Yep. I've got nice low tyre pressures too, so they're bagging and I'm getting lots of, lots of big footprint. You know what though, mate? Mine look better. <laughs> Oh. Let's, let's go. <laughs> I'll give you that one for sure. Well, here we go. We've still got four or five k's to go, and nobody knows what the track's like in front of us. I thought this bit would be easy, and I know we've got some tougher stuff to come. Well, well, we'll just have to see, won't we? It's where the adventure begins, I guess. Welcome to Ruthie's Ruthless Tales. Go on, grab a slice of fair dinkum, Australia. Get your dose of Ruthie and put a smile on your dial. 